For years and years, the thought of a 2nd Avenue subway line was New York's version of the impossible dream. The need, the desire, and the plans for the 2nd Avenue line date all the way back to the roaring 20s, when the Bambino dominated the Big Apple sports scene and elevated subways dominated the landscape of Manhattan's east side. For the most part, uh, uh, cities that have owls have been working to replace them over time. Uh, you know, in the case of Second Avenue, this is, some, this is just something that should have happened half a century ago. But this dream has fallen victim time after time to a myriad of things, starting first with the Great Depression. It was actually funded in a bond issue in 1951, but that money was diverted to uh, repair the existing system. And then it was funded again in 1967. But the city's fiscal jam of the 1970s put the kibosh on the dream yet again, even after some tunnel portions were actually built to support the new line. Tunnels that would eventually sit dormant for decades. The R11, which you see here, is one of 10 cars that were built as part of an experimental train in 1949, incorporating a lot of new technologies and also incorporating stainless steel construction. And this was envisioned as the precursor to uh, 600 cars, which would be ordered to equip the 2nd Avenue subway had it been built. Of course, the subway is never built. But all that's about to change. We weren't ready before. We weren't ready operationally or managerially. We proved that we know how to build projects on time and on budget. And that, combined with the uh, huge growth in the ec economics of the city, and the growth in the need for mass transit, as we all know now, um, requires it to be built, and, and now's the time. So get ready, New York. The time to break ground for the 2nd Avenue subway has arrived, and most definitely not a moment too soon. As we look at the growth through 2030, a million more people in the city, a million and a half in the region, we're not going to be able to accommodate that kind of growth without the 2nd Avenue subway. The project will be carried out in four stages. The first stage will see the introduction of service from 96th Street to 63rd Street as an extension of the queue line, and it'll all be made possible by a not-so-little machine. Breaking ground is an understatement. We had to bore through rock in Manhattan, and in order to do that, so we are going to be using tunnel boring machines. Tunnel boring machine is a machine with uh, blades, what we call the cutters, that cuts through the rock in Manhattan and then bores through there to make the tunnel. And that's about 250 feet long, the total length of the machine. And building a 21st century subway system means the old construction standards of 100 years ago will remain as quaint a memory as the East Side Elves themselves. If you go around the world, the new technology is something that's there in every station. And there is a lot of emphasis on fire life safety, the you know, ventilation requirements, and, uh, and security requirements after 9-11. All of those features have to be incorporated into our new subway system. So phase one of the new line, again a second avenue extension of the Q train, will feature four new stations along this very tunnel after it's extended. You'll find them at 96th, 86th, and 72nd Streets, and at an expansion of the existing station at 63rd and Lex. All of the new stations will be fully ADA accessible. And when it comes to comfort, you may want to leave that portable fan in your bag during those New York heat waves. You probably won't need it. Air conditioning would be highly inefficient, but something called air tempering will keep each new station some 10 to 15 degrees cooler than what it feels like outside. Now, what about all that construction? Most people won't even know what's happening. Interruption of businesses and personal lives during this construction is going to be at a minimum. Community, by and large, has been supportive of it. You know, there are individual properties where there's concern about takings, but overall, this has been something that the east side of Manhattan and the city of New York has been dying for going back 80 years. I think this is the most important project in terms of subways in the United States. It speaks to the ability of cities to advance in the 21st century in a way that supports economic growth, uh, environmental uh, health. It's the future.